Hi there my friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am just wanted to show you this little Northern Lights painting I did in watercolour, just using three colours from the Rosa Gallery paints. I used Cadmium Lemon, Turquoise and Indigo and I mixed that light green you can see there, just using the Cadmium Lemon and the Turquoise, so just three colours in all. And I just started by taping a piece of Archie's Cold Press watercolour paper to a piece of foam board. The watercolour paper is £140 in weight and it's 100% cotton. So I started just by applying some of that mixture of green that I'd made. And really I was just having a play. I let the video run and just, yeah, just some time to myself away from the... Uh, madding crowds as it were <laughs> just some time with a coffee a podcast on a piece of wet paper and a paintbrush and you don't need many supplies if you want to just try something like this i did use two brushes but one of those was just to apply the water to the paper to begin with you could do it all just with one brush the brushes i use in this piece are the bold mirror one and a half inch flat that's the one i used I'm using it there just to apply a little bit more water. That's all I use that brush for. You could do that with any brush. Best to use a bigger brush, makes life simple. And then the brush I use throughout the painting process is one by Zen Art. It's the round number 10, and it's a fake squirrel, faux squirrel brush. So it holds a lot of water, holds a lot of pigment. And then it's just a case of getting some colors together and having a play. Now the best thing you can do if you want to work with a limited palette is just to make a couple of sample pieces. So just have a play with some colours, see what colours you can mix from a limited palette. So as you can see at the top left hand corner there's a tiny piece of paper up there and I'd messed around with some colours on there just to make sure I could mix the colours that I thought I'd need for this little painting. Now you'll have to forgive my hair keep bobbing into frame because it was just a play piece and I didn't know whether I was going to post this on the YouTube channel or not. But as it, as it turns out, I was really pleased with the outcome and I thought I'd share it with you all here today. So I started by applying the light green with a little bit of yellow as well into the wet paper. Then I began adding some of the turquoise and indigo in different amounts. And I'm just lifting off with a clean dry brush there. So I've dipped that brush into clear water and I'm just wiping some of the, um, the pigment up of the paper. So just deepening the colours there at the top. I've sped it up a little bit but you can still see the process. And at the moment I'm just letting the paint do its thing. That is one of the things with watercolour that you've got some control over it but um, it's nice just to let watercolour behave how it wants to behave and it can you can get some really nice effects. Oh I'm using a Deerfoot stippling brush there just lifting out some of the pigment but you don't need to do that. You could do that with a tissue or you could do it with just a your dried round paintbrush. So just I'm going upwards with the strokes and cleaning the pigment off on a tissue each time. But as I said, you could do that with the brush that you've been painting with. It doesn't have to be any particular brush or just a rolled up piece of tissue. Or you could roll a piece of tissue around your finger and lift it out that way. So just experiment, just have fun with your paints, have fun with your paper and brushes and experimentation is great it can be relaxing um, especially if it's a rainy day things like that and this little painting took about an hour and a half that's all so I have sped it up a bit for you because I think it is true there's nothing worse than just sitting watching paint dry and there's not a lot to see at the moment just doing the same rinse and repeat lifting out pigment getting a bit of movement into those northern lights that I wanted to paint. So I was in the Arctic last August, but I went when the uh, the sun is high in the sky for 24 hours a day, so I didn't see the northern lights. It's something I would like to see, but uh, maybe another year. 
Now then, just using a fine mist spraying bottle just to wet the surface so it, it had fully dried, it had fully dried, I used a hair dryer uh, just to make sure the pigment had settled into the paper and dried and now I'm going in with a second wash and if you're using a good quality paper you can do this multiple times so if you're just having a play about that's okay but just to let you know that paint does work differently it does react differently depending on the paper that you use and if you go for a trusted and true well-known brand such as Arches in 100% cotton then the the paint will move and spread and you'll be able to lift and repeat and lift and repeat, repeat without damaging the surface of the paper it's a very robust paper hope everybody's keeping well Hope everybody's enjoying the beginning of uh, 2024 and that it's been a good year for you so far and you're getting some creating done. Sorry about the hair going in the way there. And the lighting, uh, the studio lighting that I'm working under really does <clears throat> wash out the colours. So uh, that's why I've put the finished painting to the top right hand side. So you can see where I was actually going with this painting didn't work from any re reference images just out of my head <laughs> yeah I dread to think what it'd look like if I had uh, a few more coffees that day but just keeping flowing I've, I've already settled I like the the way that the uh, greens are moving through the paper so I would, did want to keep those running a clean damp brush through again to add a little bit of movement into the the washes I've had quite a few people commenting on my last uploaded video saying what they'd like to see me produce next so the to-do list is filling up which is great because uh, inspires me to make more videos inspires me to create uh, subjects and work with mediums that I might not have uh, thought of doing so if you'd like to see me work in a particular medium or cover a particular subject then just pop it in the comments below I do read them all and I do reply to everybody so just keep lifting now some of them like that one just added a little bit of pigment down into the green so nice and quickly just lifting that back out and when I think I've worked enough on one layer I dry it completely with a hair dryer uh, before going in with the next layer if I was to scrub away at there you go so it's been dried spraying some more water on now the reason I don't go on with a brush and add water is I don't want the chance of lifting any of the pigment underneath now that it's all dried and settled into place so just blotting a little bit off there so if I want to add more pigment go in with some water with a misting bottle and add the pigment after that and the glare from the lights was so intense and I was trying not to get my head in in the way of the camera that uh, it was a bit of a struggle to see where the uh, pigment was going and where it wasn't and where the water had landed and where it hadn't but that's okay hence my hair keep flicking into frame that when I tilted it away from the lights you could actually see how dark it was then just remember that watercolours they do shift um, when they dry so they do go around about 25% lighter when they dry than when you apply them <coughs> excuse me so keep that in mind as well when you're working on a piece you might think you're going too dark but generally you, it very rarely happens that you go too dark uh, once a watercolour painting has dried So just lifting some of the pigment that's bleeding out into the green. Keep wiping my brush off on a tissue so that the I'm not transferring the dark pigment to areas where I don't want it to be. And in with the hairdryer again. Now the hairdryer is great but it does um, decrease the adhesiveness of the masking tape. So that's just something to keep in mind. I th I think actually that during the painting some of the masking tape started to lift because of the heat from the hairdryer and I do replace that but uh, 
that's not on film. You'll notice when there's clean masking tape around the edges and not one affected by the paint. So going in with a little bit more green, as I said, I mix the green from the cadmium lemon and the turquoise. So I just wanted to stick to using just three colours. These paints are absolutely brilliant. They are the Rosa Gallery. It's a Ukrainian product. So it's a lovely paint if you uh, want to purchase them and support a Ukrainian company, especially at the moment. I uh, don't want to get into politics, but uh, yeah, they're a lovely paint. The light fastness ratings are good. They have all the pigment details in the tin. It comes with a swatch card ready to paint and they flow really well. So just letting those colours bleed together just a little bit, but I don't want to lose the lights too much. So just letting the water run down that the green area and letting the pigment flow. Now I had, at this point, because it was just a, a play piece, it was just an experimental piece, um, some time for myself. I didn't really know what I was going to do with the foreground yet. I didn't even know whether this was a piece that I was going to keep or just experiment with until it looked awful or just one of those pieces. So you'll notice throughout the painting that I do certain things and then change my mind and go in and change them. And that's just the process of painting. It's a learning curve. No matter how long you've been painting, there's always something new to learn, something new to experiment with and experience. And I think that is part of the joy. It never gets boring. It never gets old. Even if you've just got a piece of paper and a pencil, you can still experiment with shapes and shading and composition, perspective, all different things like that. So there's always something new to do <clears throat> and it doesn't have to take a lot of time either. So as happy so far, <laughs> obviously, so I've moved on to um, having a play with some out of focus trees in a tree line <coughs> excuse me so when you're working with something like this um, and you want to work from the the back of the landscape to the foreground it's always nice to keep in mind things like um, perspective and that things are going to be slightly out of focus the further you go back the more out of focus they get and generally speaking the lighter the color um, the further you go back. So I went in a little bit too dark here. I wish it had gone in a little bit lighter there. But as you can see in the finished painting, I did amend it with a little bit of white gouache towards the end just to push the the contrast back a bit. So contrast is how light something is and how dark something is. And I wanted that to be a little bit lighter in the middle there. So I do push it back with a little bit of gouache. And all gouaches, as you'll see at the end, it's just an, an opaque watercolour. So still using those three colours. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And uh, just varying the different tones that are going in there and different hues. Wetting the paper with a little bit of diluted pigment and then just dropping a little bit more pigment into that. That's actually called charging. If you hear of an artist talking about charging in watercolour, that's all they're doing is they're just adding pigment to an already wetted area. And it's normally a, an area that's been wetted with a different pigment. So just tilting the board now. And just let it, again, I just don't know where I'm going with this painting, just having a play. So just softening out that edge a little bit and then adding sort of the second layer of trees. Still didn't know if this was going to be just a piece I carry on playing with, um, but that's fine. It's just nice, just no pressure. Let the video run. If you want to record yourself, you can use your phone. So I've done that before, but just to um, have a play and relax. I think the trouble is if I'm geared up to making an actual video for YouTube, 
then I'm constantly aware that the video is running. I'm constantly aware that I've got to keep um, stopping and starting it if I move the board or the paper uh, because my video camera hasn't got a pause button. You do actually have to stop it and restart it. And I think when, you, when you're aware that, the, well, for me personally, when I'm aware that the video camera is running, I'm generally not as relaxed as I am if there's not a video camera running and it's ridiculous isn't it I've painted and taught for well I've taught for over 20 years and I don't have that problem if I'm teaching in person it's I'll paint in front of anybody it doesn't bother me at all but as soon as I know there's a video camera running it's like ooh, freeze frame <laughs> I guess it's like having your photo taken isn't it and things like that are you not as relaxed when you've got a video or a camera pointing at you so going in with darks now and the darker trees yes they're larger so they look like they're closer to you but with them being darker as well that also makes it look like they're closer to you to you as as well so just keep that in mind working darker as you're coming to forward to the foreground lifting some of the paint off now so now i've got in my mind that I want it to be a cool scene so obviously it's going to be cool wherever you see the northern lights but I'm thinking of adding a little bit of snow okay that's a mistake that I have to work around and going in far too warm the warm colors there that green yeah and it's not lifting out as much as I'd wanted it to it's actually settled into the paper and that is why I come in later towards the end of the video with some gouache just to lighten it all up so don't be afraid of your supplies there's nothing you do in artwork that can't be fixed it's uh, and it's just as I said a learning curve I should have known better but there you go we're just here to have fun so as long as I'm enjoying it I don't mind and I'm going darker oh my word <laughs> so really really yeah not thinking about the process too well during that part of the painting so lifting out with the tissue while it's still damp and now i'm at quite enjoying that lifting that i've done um, to the right of the middle and just playing with the water now letting the water move some of the pigment around so i've not dried it again yet and still faffing with the background there trying to soften out the the edge there with some water and i think it's when i realized that the paint edge along there had really dried it didn't really want to lift any more than that is what i thought to myself i'll just bring in the gouache towards the end of the painting so if you have um, a white watercolour paint it's not the same as white gouache so white gouache as I said is an opaque watercolour so generally if you buy a you know a decent white gouache or even one of the jelly cup white gouaches they will you know go over and cover pigment up white watercolour that's a different uh, medium altogether really that's really for lightening your existing watercolours so it's more of a mixing white than an opaque white it's white but it's still translucent so really enjoying this painting now and yeah just I oh, really enjoyed it I painted it yesterday and it was just so nice just so relaxing just to sit and have a coffee listen to a podcast and it's just oh just relaxing and not worrying that I'm working from a reference image it's not a commission it's not going to be perfect it's just for me and I think we all need some some quality time in our lives where we can just sit back and uh, enjoy the processes of creating whatever we create whether that's knitting or crochet or embroidery or drawing painting just have some quality time for yourself and it doesn't have to be a long time either even if it's just you know half an hour when the children are in bed just enjoy yourself and do something for you so now I've gone in with the uh, damp brush and I'm just softening out that distant edge it has softened a little bit 
more still not lifted to where I'd like it to but that's fine okay so there's my gouache mixed it with quite a bit of water and now it's just flicking it on with a toothbrush not too much less is more tried lifting it off the trees there because I should have covered the trees if I didn't want um, stars to be on them <laughs> but I was going to put snow there anyway so it's fine that's not a problem at all so still using the number round number 10 round brush by Zen Art the Zen Art brushes I've got a set and they are fabulous I love them so I do use them quite a lot when I'm working with watercolour or gouache So just adding some snowy mounds and just dibbling about. I don't know if that's a real word, but it is now. Just so, just like spotting, I guess. Just like stippling, but very small and random. So when you're applying something like this, try not to make patterns because it is noticeable. Just try and be a little bit random. Have a feel in your mind about where the snow would land and obviously less is more now I did experiment there because I said it this was an experiment piece I didn't know where, whether I was going to share this on YouTube or not and so I thought you know can you apply gouache with a toothbrush but uh, it didn't work how I wanted it to work so I went in with the normal brush instead now I enlarged those two stars but I did lift the one on the very right out later with a damp brush because I felt it was just two stars just there too much so I just do, I do lift that out later but as you can see the studio lights are really washing the colors and the contrast out and it's uh, I guess it looks different when I'm sitting in front of it it, it didn't look that washed out so coming towards the end now and here we go adding just a tiny tiny bit of gouache mixed with that green colour just to lighten that area in the distance and I think that works really well. And on the finished painting it really isn't noticeable that I've put gouache over there it just looks like a very light wash of watercolour. And there you have it, the finished painting. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. And don't forget to leave a comment in the boxes below if you'd like me to cover a new subject.